Here we go, day two on the Susquehanna River. First thing I need to do is give a really big shout out to Mr. Abby Abendanza. He was in second place right behind me after the first day, and we saw each other in the morning and realized we were both heading to the same water. Uh, I talked to him because it's always good to communicate, you know, if you're sharing water. And we weren't fishing the exact same stuff. We were just fishing nearby, and so we knew we weren't going to get in each other's way. And I was like, hey, man, if you want to access the water the way that I'm doing it, it'll be faster for you if you come on with me um, instead of going all the way around like you had been. And so he was going to come with me. What I forgot in that moment was that part of accessing would be going directly through my where I caught my big one the first day on that first cast right at the mouth of that little channel I was using. So I asked him, hey, man, I know it's a really uh, big request. Do you mind waiting for that first cast so I can throw two or three times right here because I feel like I could maybe get one of my biggest bites here. He obliged, which is totally not something he needed to do, and I would have understood if he did not do that. But seeing as I was in the lead and he was right behind me and he still did that, uh, hats off to him. That is, that's what competitive fishing is about. It's you know not necessarily about uh, beating the other anglers as much as it is about beating the fish. And so he wasn't trying to you know mess my fish up. He gave me the full opportunity to catch him right there, and you know we made an agreement. Hey man, I'm gonna go up, you go down, and that was it. And we both honored that both had a good day of fishing. I never went down there, but it looked really good on a map. There's like a rock ledge A jet boat came all the way up to right here yesterday. A jet boat came all the way up to right there yesterday. Yeah, but those they can, they can, really? You too, man. He is not big at all. I was just excited.
So you should be able to recognize I'm working my way through that same top water stretch as the day before. I think that other GoPro angle is really neat because it shows just how shallow it was when I was fishing. You can see that water is not even close to my knees most of the time, which is really neat. I was disappointed because the bites I was getting were a lot smaller than the day before, so I was kind of sweating it because we were not supposed to have good sight fishing conditions later in the day. I thought I was going to have to get to work early. He's not a great big one, but one I'll take right now. Mm, that was a big one. Gosh darn it. Please stay on. Oh my gosh. Here they are. Gosh. I don't know if I'm pushing the same ones further up there. So I wasn't sure if I was pushing the same fish up river and I, that's why I kept seeing fish spook and wake. But regardless, I knew I needed to change something because the fish were just not committing to that bait like they were the day before. So I started to try that silent top water to see if I could get some more to commit.
Come get it, come get it. There's other fish with him. I could feel them hitting him. Was hoping they would hook up. Damn it. Come eat it. Stay on there, buddy. Goodness gracious. What is that? Four jumps? Or more? Too many jumps? That's what that is. He's not even that big. Can't tell if he's nice, he's got one hook. Don't know if he's nice or not. I would like to find out if he's nice. He doesn't, doesn't seem like a giant one. Oh, maybe he's big. Come on, fish. Mmm, might be okay. Oh gosh, no, he's okay. <laughs> Gonna help by a very, very small amount. But, for now we gotta take that. <laughs> Biggin, stay on fish. About to be a spinning rod showdown. He's not huge. Oh, he's really not that big. Wow, he looked so big. He's not even gonna help. He looks Freaking huge out there. I would have sworn that was an 18 inch fish. So this is where things start to get pretty cool. I know that a lot of people are probably out there thinking, oh, if I would have had the best area and, you know, knew that secret bait, I would have caught them. I think that this next little sequence kind of shows where I feel like I personally set myself apart as an angler and I'm able to work with what's in front of me even if it's a pretty difficult situation. There's a 
big one right there. We got to throw the bug. fish. I need you bad. Walk him away from the juice. That's a good one. Oh no, not the stick, not the stick, not the stick. Big one with him. Okay. You can't go through this riffle, okay? A good one. Had to do the bug. Mmm. Mmm. I need to catch that one. And guess what he's up there eating? Bugs. So I've just spotted that fish up there. This little zone right here, you can see there's a couple little riffles up there. This is where I caught those fish the day before where there were fish waking everywhere. This is where I came through earlier in the morning with the chopo and caught a 16 and a half, but saw a lot of other nice fish that were not committing and were being skittish. So I already know that this is a good area and I've seen this nice fish up here eat a bug. Now I'm trying to slowly make my way up there. You can see, I mean, the water's halfway up my shins. So I'm having to go so slow and be so careful not to spook this fish. Please stay on here. be a battle. Yeah. Just need you to quit running. Start rolling on the surface. So prior to this, I thought that I pretty much had to be sight fishing in order to catch these fish with the bug just because it does not cover very much water. Now I've realized that since I have these fish pinned down in this small area and this certain lane that I talked about in the last video that I have to stay in of the right depth where they seem to be wanting to sit. So I'm just working my way up and just plunking this fly around in that area.
big one. No, 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 no. I know you know that tree is over there. Your butt. Gosh, this this is weird. As I'm fighting this fish, I'm going to take a minute and explain. You can see it's pretty overcast right now, and the water has a very big glare on it, so I'm not sight fishing at this point. I thought that I was going to not have the opportunity to sight fish, so while I had this little bite going, I was really stressing, really trying to go ahead and get five 18-inch fish while I had this opportunity. Gonna help a little. Do what? Yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, he's gonna put me over 90. What's your name? Well, I promise you what I'm doing, you probably don't have it and, and wouldn't be able to get it. I'll give you a hint, but you gotta promise to keep it to yourself. Uh, yesterday, I submitted a fish and the bait is in the picture. Did not mean to do it. And guess what? People probably saw it and went, he's full of shit. he's messing with us. So I wasn't even worried. But I'm probably gonna let the cat out of the bag because I got cool stuff on video and it's a really cool technique, so. I get too excited about fishing. It's so cool that I wanna tell everybody.
It's a good one. Let me see how good. So I've now gotten out of the skinny stuff. The sun popped out miraculously and I'm now sight fishing. I knew that with these conditions I needed to go and hunt down big fish. You can see I'm sitting down just pedaling. Standing up, I feel like they saw me a little too well, so this was a, a happy medium for looking around for them. So I'm about to spot one over here to my right in the shade of this tree and you'll notice I actually have to open my bail up because the fish is underneath my bait but he's not biting and the current was about to mess my drift up so I let some line out. He's big enough. So I made a pass through about a quarter mile stretch and I saw enough fish that I decided it was probably worth me doubling back and going through because some of those fish will catch you off guard and you're not quite prepared enough to make the cast or when you spot them they're too close and they've seen you. There were enough that I went back through.
They don't quit. Thank you, man, for letting me come back in there. So I ended up catching a few more 17, 17 and a half inch fish on the bug throughout the remainder of the tournament, but that was my last upgrade. I have shown plenty of fish catches. You're probably not really trying to see another 17 and a half inch or get caught on the bug because you know what that's all about. Wrapped it up, got the win. My brother got second place. It was super, super cool for us to both be able to do that out there. And hope you enjoyed. Going to get into the gear description for the last little bit of the video, and that's all I got. Going to go over some baits and stuff from the river. Obviously, everybody is wondering about this thing. Um, little evergreen gizmo. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I would really appreciate it if you go and check out my buddies at Fishing Online and get the bait from them. The darker colors seem to be the best. I was using black and green pumpkin. This is a black one. Honestly, the green pumpkin one doesn't look that much different. My little brother was catching big ones on a white one, so do what you want with that information. The gizmo, I was throwing that on a 7-2 medium light Abu Garcia winch. Um, this is like a, yeah, it's a spy bait rod. Um, I guess like spy baits and shad wraps is what this rod is made for. It's very light throws the bait well you need a pretty light rod honestly I would rather have like a 7.6 for it but 7.2 definitely gets the job done this is a Zeta Abu Garcia Zeta 30 size which is 3,000 size if you're not familiar with uh, how Abu does their sizes had 10 pound Berkley X9 braid on that um, I like using white or some type of high visibility braid because I'm fishing such a long leader that I'm not worried about the fish seeing my braid I just but I want to be able to see my braid whether that's you know, a line jump when a fish eats a bait or just being able to track my bait as I'm drifting it through the current, that high visibility braid really helps. For a leader on that little bug, I was using good old Berkley Trilene, eight pound. Uh, anybody, I know we probably all grew up fishing Trilene on like everything, uh, I know I did. This stuff's pretty indestructible and you need a floating leader for that bug because if you use fluorocarbon, it's gonna kind of pull that bug underneath the surface and they do not like it when you do that with it. The other rod that did all the damage was this bad boy Chapo setup. Um, I was catching some on a smaller bait, not the one I'm talking about, but y'all know supply chain's messed up. I wasn't able to get my hands on the right one at the time for the tournament. This one right here, I did catch some fish on day two with it. I know you saw them in the video. This is the 105 size Chapo. This is actually a saltwater Chapo. I changed the hooks out on it for something a little lighter wire since I am bass fishing with it. This is a new color. Uh, all the, the Chapo saltwater colors are new. This is called Mangrove Minnow. That thing looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, that looks just like a creek chub or something like those fish would be eating. I didn't even know this color existed until my buddy at Pure Fishing sent me some because I needed some Chapos last minute. I was throwing that on a Veritas PLX uh, seven foot fast medium. It's so this rod in particular, it has, a, it has a pretty light tip on it. I don't know how I've got the camera angle set up right now, if y'all even be able to see this, but it's, uh, this, is, this rod, I would call it like a little bit too heavy for a jerk bait, is right about where this rod is at, which is really nice for a topwater. And honestly, when you're fishing chopos, uh, you wanna hook those fish pretty well, especially when they're in like a foot and a half of water, there's only one way for them to go and that's up. Got that on a Revo SX. Um, 7.3 to 1 gear ratio. Really like that for topwater fishing. You're going to want something fast, but I don't like something too fast. I know some people like the crazy 
nines and ten gear ratio for uh, like a buzz bait or a chop bow. I'm not one of those people. Had 40 pound uh, Berkley X9 braid on that, and my leader for that was take a guess, Trilene. Uh, 17 pound Trilene mono. Nothing fancy. It's cheap, strong. I like using a mono leader. I don't really know that the fish are necessarily seeing it, seeing the leader, but it makes me feel better knowing that if that is part of the equation, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I am mostly thinking about it from the standpoint of, and I know everybody had this happen, smallmouth really like to knock a bait into the air and you know make the bait do cartwheels and stuff when they get in behind it. You'll miss a lot of fish. You know, they might bite two or three times in the same cast. Well, that mono leader is a lot stiffer than the braid, and so it gives you a better chance that when that bait cartwheels, uh, it won't get wrapped up in the treble hooks. And if it does, it's way easier to get out than braid. Everybody knows when braid gets in your split rings, it just sucks. Um, so I like using mono leaders on all my top waters, and I, unless I'm like fishing a popper and letting it sit for a really long time, I don't think that visibility is part of the equation. I'm just using it to keep the uh, line out of the hooks. Here's the little 75 Berkeley Chapo. It's what I would have liked to have thrown, but I only had white and I needed a clear one. Um, so that's why I was throwing that other bait. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes when it's a tournament because, well, for one, the supply chain screwed up so you can't get anything. I work for Pure Fishing and I was not even able to get my uh, hands on the right color and the right, uh, and the right size quickly enough. Is what it is. Um, yeah, this bad boy is awesome. This one doesn't spin as much as that other one does. The other one was twisting up my line and I've had people commenting saying, oh, you put a swivel on it. Well, even if you do put a swivel on it, yeah, that gets rid of your line twist. But if during your retrieve, if every now and then this sucker's going bloop and, and flipping over, which doesn't happen as much with the Chapo. That's why I like the Chapo so much. Um, if it's rolling and it's like this and he eats it, you're not gonna get that fish. So yeah, the swivel will take care of some of the problem. But to me, I don't want a bait that's not running true. Also, it doesn't look as nice when it's going like, you know, it's chopping and then bloop. Bloop, bloop. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Sometimes you get one, you'll have a bait that either the wire's bent or whatever and it's not running right. So, yeah, like the Chapo a lot more. It seems to run straighter. This is a 75. They wanted a small bait for me. Uh, my brother caught him on a big one, but smaller bait and a clear color was money. So, if I could have had this bad boy in mangrove minnow, which I don't even think they make a 75 Chapo, but or a 75 saltwater Chapo, but maybe we can get a 75 in mangrove minnow because like i said that bad boy looks so good um yeah that's it for the rods and reels uh i got my little walking bait rod back here didn't really catch anything that mattered on it but that's a six foot nine medium light fast it's a 20 size on there it's a little small but for the river smallmouth did really well all right that's uh yeah that's it go buy some bugs from fishing online please and thank you